Hello everyone, I'll go over another game by Bobby Fischer and this one was played in the 58 US Championship against his uh, biggest rival or his biggest rival to be Samuel Reshevsky. And Samuel Reshevsky was in the at the time uh, perhaps the strongest US player and uh, the most feared, feared US player and uh, during uh, Bobby's steep rise to the top he was his biggest rival and uh, Samuel Reshevsky definitely felt that Bobby was a uh, competition to him. Uh, Reshevsky was born in 1911 in Poland, in Luj, uh, in a small town that was then the Russian Empire. And by the age of six or seven, he already became a very strong player for, for that uh, region. And uh, he, he held simultaneous exhibitions against the strongest players of the, of the country. And his parents decided to capitalize on his talent and they moved to the States when he was eight. So just after World War I. And in the States, he quickly became one of the best players. He won his first US Championship when he was only uh, 20, at, uh, in 1932, I think. And after that, he won several more uh, until the 40s, uh, until Fisher was born. And he was by far the strongest player in the US. And if anybody was the favorite to win the US Championship, it was him. And in the 57-58 Championship, uh, one of uh, the games I've covered a uh, few videos before, Bobby actually won one point ahead in clear first and Reshevsky came in second. So this was a major upset and uh, the start of their rivalry, which would last for the for the next 20 years. Of course, uh, Reshevsky was 30 years older, so uh, they couldn't really uh, socialize normally. And perhaps that was another reason. But I'm sure that uh, Bobby being a much stronger, much stronger player, even when he was a kid, was the major factor in upsetting Samuel Reshevsky. He wasn't who wasn't a nice personality in general, uh, from what you can read online uh, about him. He was very, uh, a very confrontational person, so to say. In this game, uh, this was in the 58-59 US Championship, so a year after Bobby won his first. Uh, Bobby had the white pieces, Reshevsky was black, and Bobby opened with pawn to e4, his favorite opening. Uh, let me just turn off the sound on the board. Uh, silent. Okay. So after e4, Reshevsky played c5, the Sicilian defense, a fighting opening against young Bobby, which is argu arguably a bad idea because Bobby at 15 was so tactically strong that you should play something passive against him. Uh, c5, knight to f3, knight to c6, d4, c takes d4, they go for the old Sicilian. Uh, knight takes d4 and now g6. Reshevsky plays the accelerated dragon, which is probably one of the most aggressive variations of the Sicilian. But after bishop to e3, which is a slightly uncommon idea, uh, the best move for white here is after g6 to play c4, get a strong Moroxy bind in the center, and this now resembles uh, a Kramnik variation. And bishop to g7 to play bishop to e3 just then, and to develop the knight to c3 uh, when the pawn is on c4 already, so white has a stronger center, and black can't really uh, push uh, d5, which is his main idea to break in the center. So he will have work a lot harder. Have to work, work a lot harder to develop normally. Another idea in this position after g6 and the second most common move is knight to c3 immediately, just defending e4, and after bishop to g7 to then play bishop to e3. But then, but they transpose to this position because after g6, bishop to e3, knight to f6. Now Bobby does play knight to c3, and we have bishop to g7, bishop to c4. Bobby plays a semi-Yugoslav attack and he's preparing to play place the queen on d2 get a strong battery on the diagonal and challenge the g7 bishop by playing bishop to h6 and of course his main idea in these types of position h4 h5 open up the position and checkmate the opponent Reshevsky castles here we have bishop to b3 saving the bishop and now uh, Reshevsky goes badly wrong he actually he actually makes the position almost completely unplayable after this move because in Sicilian positions, in many Sicilian positions, the movie 5 uh, isn't on the table for white, even though it might seem tempting. And the main reason is the knight on c6, who is defending uh, e5. And Reshevsky plays knight to a5, challenging the b3 bishop, which is first of all a waste of tempo, because arguably the, the knight on c6 is better than the bishop on b3, who would already spent uh, two tempi to develop to b3. And what's uh, the major factor in the position, the knight on c6 was defending e5. And now... White gets a huge advantage after e5, and the knight on f6 doesn't really have that many squares. Uh, the h5 square isn't good because after g4, what do you do? Uh, you've just lost your knight. So the only option, if you don't want to lose it on d5, is to retreat to e8. And Reshevsky should have played knight takes b3 and given up a piece in this position. And after knight takes b3, Bobby would of course take on f6. Now knight takes a1, grabbing the rook. Okay, he would, he would uh, give up two pieces for the rook. 
F takes g7, uh, king takes, and now white could either take the knight or just castle, best is to castle, and then the knight would give itself up for the c2 pawn. And in this position, Bobby would have four pieces, and he would stand much better, of course, but Rashevsky would have two pawns and the rook for two pieces, so the position isn't playable, but it's survivable for black. But after e5, Rashevsky played knight to e8, which is far too passive, and it gives... It gives Bobby Fischer a winning uh, a winning tactic immediately at the start of the opening. This is now move nine, and the move that Bobby played, which uh, isn't that easy to see actually, he, he must have calculated it in depth very much. Uh, it immediately wins the position. He just takes an f7. Bishop takes f7, and the point of the tactic is that whatever White does, uh, whatever Black does, I'm sorry, he's going to lose the queen. There is no way to save the queen because. First of all, if he doesn't take uh, the bishop, if he goes to, uh, if he plays king to h8, then uh, knight to e6 is winning the queen. Uh, because if you take with d takes e6, then of course queen takes d8. And there is no squares for the queen. c7 is covered by the knight and b6 is covered by the bishop. So the queen is lost. And uh, what Reshevsky played after bishop takes f7 ends up in pretty much the same uh, variation. Now after king takes f7, uh, knight to e6 once again, and now d takes e6, and the queen is lost. Another uh, another thing he could have tried not to lose the queen was king takes uh, king takes e6, but this is a forced checkmate in six moves. After queen to d5 check, uh, king to f5. This is the only move. G4 check. King takes d king takes g4. Now rook to g1, getting another piece into play. King to h4, bishop to g5 check, and after king to h5, queen to d1, and black would just have to give up the, the rook on f3, and the next move is checkmate. So taking with the king is not an option after a knight, uh, knight to e6, you just can't take the knight. You have to give up the queen, that's the only move. And you can uh, give it up either by taking uh, the knight or by not taking the knight, so it's better to take the piece. Rashevsky plays d, take e d takes e6, and now queen takes d8. And if you count the material, Rashevsky has two pieces for the queen, which is definitely not enough. The, pawn, the, the pawns are equal, both sides have seven pawns. And what's uh, another major factor in the position is that Rashevsky has horrible doubled uh, e-pawns, so even if the material was equal, this position would be clearly winning for white. Because if you imagined all the pieces of the board, then uh, white would have no trouble winning one of his uh, one of his pawns, especially the queen side ones, because he has a clear three on two pawn majority and this majority and this uh, uh, these isolated pawns on the e file are useless for black now after queen takes d8 of course the position is already unplayable for black but he plays on uh, bobby is his biggest rival he plays knight to c6 uh, challenging the queen the queen goes to d2 bishop takes e5 grabbing a pawn but now after castles and knight to d6 Bishop to f4 immediately exchanges one more piece, and Bobby is of course trying to exchange as many pieces as possible because he's uh, three points up in material. So uh, as as the pieces get exchanged off, his advantage will be amplified even more. Knight to c4, attacking the queen and the bishop uh, with the bishop on e5, but Bobby has a solution for that. Queen to e2, he is keeping his attack on the knight. And now after Rashevsky takes the bishop, he simply takes on c4. And now king to g7. Uh, knight to e4, bishop to c7, knight to c5, and uh, Rashevsky perhaps shouldn't have uh, been this passive after losing the queen. If he had managed to, to activate his bishop to develop into d, to d7 and to activate his rook, the position might have been survivable, but now the bishop can't develop because the knight is attacking d7. That means that the rook is stuck on a8 for another couple of moves. So now, uh, even if, uh, if Bobby didn't have such a material advantage, because... Uh, arguably these rooks aren't playing, so the advantage isn't that obvious. So even if he didn't have the, the material advantage, the position would be much better for white. Now rook to f6, he has to defend uh, e6, which was falling with check. c3, this is a, a very, uh, very bobby-like move. He is reducing the scope of the knight, and this knight now has no squares. It's out of the game, same as the bishop uh, on c8 and the rook on a8. e5. Uh, rook a to d1, getting his last pieces into play. Knight to d8, another pretty passive move by uh, Reshevsky. Knight to d to d7, uh, rook to c6, the rook was attacked. Now queen to h4, attacking e7, which would be with check. Rook to e6, but now simply knight to c5 dislodges the rook from the defense of d7. And after rook to f6, knight to e4, Reshevsky gives it up with rook to f4, uh, attacking the queen and the knight, but queen takes e7 check. 
rook to f7 and now rook, uh, queen to a3 and this is now completely unplayable. He tries uh, knight to c6, knight to d6, attacking the rook and the bishop now forcibly exchanging uh, some of the pieces and what can he do? He takes, bishop takes d6, rook takes d6, now bishop to f5, b4 advancing and trying to dislodge the knight from c6, rook f f8, b5, the knight goes to d8, rook to d5, attacking e5, knight to f7, defending, uh, rook to c5, a6, b6, uh, now he's locked down uh, black's pawn structure as well, and now the rook has a permanent outpost on the on the c7 square, on the most active square on the board. He will infiltrate on the 7th rank as well. Bishop to e4, uh, rook to e1, attacking the bishop and the e5 pawn twice. Bishop to c6, and now he just gives up the exchange because he reasons that the b pawn will be too strong. After rook takes c6, b takes c6, b7, now Rashevsky is for forced to defend uh, the b8 square for the rest of the game, and he doesn't really have the material to do so. He plays rook a to b8, stopping the pawn. Now queen to a6, grabbing another pawn, and now knight to d8, attacking b7 twice. Rook to b1 defending, rook to f7 now attacking three times, but after h3 making some luft and making sure that there is no uh, mating threats uh, for black, the position is completely safe and whichever exchange occurs now, Bobby will be material up and if nothing he's passed, a pawn will be uh, too strong to stop and prevent from queening. Now uh, uh, Reshevsky takes, rook f takes b7, rook takes b7, rook takes b7 and now the winning move which... Uh, forks two pieces and wins on the spot queen a8 and now there is no way to save the the rook and the knight and whatever Reshevsky does the position is just lost and if he checks on on b1 the king would go to h2 and after that if the knight moves queen at least takes on c6 and rook and uh, rook and rook and knight versus queen and two pawns is impossible to hold so Reshevsky in this position resigned and uh, you can imagine how he must have felt a year after uh, the 14 year old chess prodigy which Reshevsky was himself at the time took over his US championship title in such fashion that Bobby was in clear first ahead of Reshevsky and of course none of the other play players ever, were even in contention for for the for the title so Bobby was his only rival and uh, immediately after in the next US championship he gets crushed this badly with a tactic such as bishop takes f7 must have been devastating so you can understand why he started not hating Bobby but resenting him for for being that much better and what came afterwards of course was that Bobby improved tenfold and Reshevsky actually deteriorated in his uh, chess mastery okay everybody uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked this uh, brilliancy by uh, young Bobby Fischer at age 15 and stay tuned for more chess. Thanks very much. Bye.